So, when's the last time you received a parking ticket? Did you pay your fine right away? Most people do, but what happens if you rack up tens of thousands of dollars in citations and refuse to pay? Maybe the bigger question, how do you get away with it? Mike and the KSL investigators spent the last two months digging for those answers. Mike? Yeah, Dave Dini, back in November, we put a request into Salt Lake City just to find out the status of parking citations out there. Well, what we found is over the last two years, the city has been short more than $3 million from violators who are not paying their fines. Well, the more we investigated, the more we found the worst offenders had one thing in common. For the thousands driving in downtown Salt Lake City, there are a few things you should probably know before stepping out of that car. You can park here, but not there. Up here, not down there. That's good, that's good, yeah, that's good, no good. Feeding the meter is gonna get you this spot, and you better be qualified to use this one. But for those willing to roll the dice, just be aware. Sir, you're parked in a no parking zone and yeah. in the bike lane. Yeah. There yeah. are consequences. And when someone's in a crosswalk or someone's from the hydrant or various areas like that, we have to address it. And they address it to the tune of 40 to 70 citations every single day. Like it or not, Salt Lake City's parking enforcement is doing its job. But over the past couple of years, a handful of individuals have been getting a surprise on their windshield shield maybe a little more often than the others. The bigger issue. How much do you think the worst parking offender owes the city? They refuse to pay. 50 bucks. I don't know, maybe 100 bucks. I would say maybe between three to 500. Higher, higher. Really? 1500. Higher? Way higher. Thousand? Not even close. Higher? Higher. Are you serious? 5,000. Higher. Wow. Much more. For parking? <laughs> yep, we're still talking about parking. Turns out the worst offender owes the city just a shade under 10,000 bucks. It's a result of racking up more than 80 citations, sometimes three in one day. Close. And while you take a moment to soak that in. Ah, whoa, hmm. Well, we were also hemming and hawing, trying to track down the worst offenders. Turns out uh, the top 10 violators over the past couple of years, we found something pretty fascinating. It seems that six of them had government plates. That's right, government plates. Well, we had one big question here, and that was, which government agency was not willing to pay up? So we built a map showing the location of every violation where these government vehicles were getting tickets. And the red dots began stacking up pretty quickly, all in the downtown area and all within a few blocks. So we sat. And we watched and found the only vehicles with government plates parked in illegal spots, ironically, were the ones sworn to enforce the laws themselves. For weeks, we witnessed Salt Lake City police parked in red zones, on curbs, in front of fire hydrants. In fact, this police car was parked so deep into the bus zone, the driver of that bus had no way of getting to the curb. Why do you have to park this far out? According to the city, police are subject to the rules regarding restricted parking locations like everybody else, with the exception of one thing, an emergency. But the officers we watched parked their cars to work foot patrol and never really appeared to be rushing to a specific emergency. So we decided to take things. Yeah, hi there. My name is Mike Hedrick with KSL TV. One step further. You guys have one of your police cruisers that's uh, parked in a red zone with a fire hydrant right here. And this was their response. Anyway, I'm the one who called it in. I saw this. A police sergeant rolled up, looked right at the situation. Me. It's not legally parked. Okay. Because it's like two feet into a red zone. And then called out parking enforcement to write the officer up and then some. Well, the officer was issued a citation. He'll probably lose a day's pay while the car was moved. Public perception, how important is that to you when you see something? Oh, it's significant. I mean, it is so much of a business, especially a service business. With photos in hand, we took our findings to Salt Lake City Police Chief Chris Burbank. And while he likely has more pressing concerns than a bad parking job, he's not ignoring it. Choose a better location to park than in front of a fire hydrant. One, because of the example it sets for the public, right? And this idea or notion that we might be above the law, which is not the case. Without dispute, Burbank calls it a bad look. But the more we investigated, the more it became clear police we're not the ones with the unpaid citations. Certainly, they seem to be the obvious offender, but the real issue was quietly parked in the background. The United States Postal Service recorded on camera and confirmed through city photos. A number of mail carriers have made it a practice of parking pretty much wherever they please. 
Toe zones, red zones, handicap zones, bike lanes, crosswalks on the curb in the middle of the street. And as many times as we saw them parked in front of one of these, you'd think they were putting out fires. You tell me why it's so important that a postal worker parks in a handicapped spot to deliver my mail. They believe that they're exempt from that. Rick Graham is director so, of public services for Salt Lake City and says this has been an ongoing battle with the Postal Service. Parking jobs like this, that, and plenty of others are not okay with the city. But USPS tells them they got a job so to do. They feel uh, that they can park where they need to in order to fulfill their constitutional mandate of delivering the mail. The Postal Service refused an interview with KSL and sent us a statement explaining they are immune from regulation, restriction, or taxation by state and local governments pursuant to the supremacy clause of the Constitution. They also say it is the goal of the Postal Service to abide by all traffic laws. However, the parking situation in downtown Salt Lake City makes it very challenging for our carriers to do so. I'm Mike Hedrick with KSL. I noticed you're parking in a red zone here. Okay. How come? There's a spot right behind you that's open. That wasn't when I got here. How about the one before that? There's another one open. That one I didn't notice. And she's not the only one who did not notice open spots. At least three vacant spaces just feet away from this van in a red zone. And watch as this truck drives away from the red paint, parking in the front, and when you look down, at least three spaces in the back. The reality is there are more than 2,500 legal spots to park in the city. Mike Hedrick, I, I saw you have a parking ticket. Oh, yeah. And at least 40 times, this carrier says he was cited for parking in the wrong ones. Do you just leave it on here then the rest of the day? Well, yeah, and then I, at the end of the day, I turn it into our boss, and then okay. they, they deal, do something with it. And what that something is, we really don't know. What we do know is this. The bulk of these tickets, more than $33,000. It doesn't surprise me at all. Are not being paid. And while there are differing opinions on the mail carrier's constitutional rights to park. They haven't paid the tickets? That's not right. Oh, wow. So you're fine with them parking in a handicapped spot? Handicapped spots. Maybe if there's two. It appears for now neither snow nor rain nor heat nor fire hydrant nor crosswalk nor handicap zone will keep these couriers from the swift completion of their appointed rounds. All right, so why doesn't the city just boot the mail trucks until they get paid? Well, Salt Lake City says it has not been their policy to do so, trying to work directly with the offending agency. A meeting is now scheduled between these two at the end of the month. We'll right. see how that goes Keep and we'll follow up. Keep us posted on that one. Yeah. Thanks. Right. Wow. Alex, thank you. It's been two months since a KSL investigation revealed the worst unpaid parking offenders in Salt Lake City. The biggest offender? The United States Post Office. Since then, the Post Office and city leaders have met to try to resolve an issue that's been going on for years. So have they fixed it? Well, Mike spent many months out on the streets trying to find out. Yeah, in short, no, they haven't fixed the problem, and it could be some time before they actually do fix this problem. Don't hold your breath on this one. Here are the facts. U.S. Postal Service owes the city tens of thousands of dollars in unpaid parking tickets. They still have not agreed to pay that money, and from what we have witnessed, they're still breaking city laws. Have you ever had a question that no matter how many times you seem to ask it, are you supposed to be parking here? Have you been parking in illegal spots? Your boss is okay with this? You simply cannot get a straight answer. I mean, right on the curb in front of a fire hydrant. Saying that's okay? For years, the United States Postal Service has been racking up parking tickets in Salt Lake City. And for years, it's claimed constitutional immunity to the city's parking laws. In their minds, when delivering the mail... The mailman's the only guy that gets away with it. They do not have to follow the rules. How many have you gotten? Uh, probably about uh, 40 in the last year. Hundreds of tickets, tens of thousands of dollars, not a penny of it paid. And after the KSL investigators shed some light on the issue, digging through records, tracking citations, and closely watching the parking patterns of Salt Lake City postal workers, well, both sides finally came together in a closed door meeting. Oh, I wouldn't say that we agree on every point. I don't, I don't think that's To try and case, hammer out I, a solution. I think that we uh, none of us expected out of a first meeting where we were able to, to get everybody in the same room to solve all the issues. Benjamin Roberts is compliance director for Salt Lake and says since our investigation, the city and post office have found some middle ground to move forward. 
In the past, communication has been the biggest issue. Tickets were written, but ignored. He says like that, that will change. There's some areas that we can't give a lot of ground on. Uh, the ADA parking is a good example. Fire zone is a good example. And they know that. They absolutely know that. But it turns out knowing something and doing it are two very, 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 very different things. A couple of weeks after the two sides laid down some ground rules, we watch those rules being broken. First by a mail carrier parked in a spot. Hi. For people driving buses. And since this is not a bus, she got a little agitated by the fact that we had a camera in hand. I'm just going to call 911. Documenting her choice in parking spots. And it was a reaction not too different from the one she's accused of dishing out to a disabled man who took this photo. In fact, he says the same mail carrier in the same truck parked in this same spot designated for those with a handicap. So just like us, he approached her, and this is how he explains a conversation. In a letter to the Postal Service, the man recalls telling her she shouldn't park in handicapped spaces, to which the mail carrier said, get over it, and then proceeded to flip off the disabled man, flashing the middle finger once and then again one or two more times. Listen, I was wondering, did you flip off a disabled man a few weeks ago? Oh, heavens no. USPS no, refused to sit down and answer our questions, but they did offer up this one sentence, quote, the Postal Service is pleased by the progress made at Friday's meeting with City of Salt Lake officials and wants to thank the city for actively participating in identifying solutions to ensure our customers' mail is delivered promptly and safely, end quote. But the safety issue is still an issue. Just watch as this carrier spent nearly half an hour parked on the sidewalk directly in front of a fire hydrant. And while he got a warning from officers. Did you write him up? Can't really talk about it, Mike. Thanks, okay. though. Yep. That piece of paper did very little to curb his questionable parking as he drove then just around the corner, finding a wide open spot in the middle of a bus zone. And he's not finished. As a carrier gets back into the truck, he takes a quick 20-yard drive where he will then spend the next 15 minutes double parked in a bike lane. And hey, if you're a cyclist, well, it's easy to see there is somewhat of a safety concern. And that right there is what the city says has been their primary concern all along, is safety, not the money. Sure, whoever drives this truck has been cited for $10,000 in fines. And sure, Salt Lake mail carriers combined have refused to pay tens of thousands of dollars for bad parking. Or they say it's still okay. But if you're a layman looking at things from one. street level here, and this is the progress that's come from that closed door meeting, that looks like postal workers are getting a pretty sweet deal. Still parking illegally, still not paying those old fines. And now, instead of getting smacked with citations, they're simply driving off with a friendly reminder. All right, so on average, the mail carrier that we watch spent anywhere from a few minutes to 30 plus minutes parked in these spots. The city has made it very clear for quite some time now. These carriers can park at meters, loading zones, time zones, even generic no parking spots. But when they park for extended periods of time in front of a fire hydrant, in the middle of a crosswalk, in a bike lane, or especially a handicapped spot, they're putting other people's safety at risk. More meetings are in the works here, but we'll see if they're any more effective than the first one they had just a few weeks ago. Uh, mm. Yeah, we certainly hope they are. Yeah, so. All right, thanks for bringing it to our attention, Mike. You're welcome.